Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 have large arsenals that give players fun and useful ways to experiment with different playstyles. In any game like this, there will always be weapons and tactics that are more powerful than others, much like how there's always a top tier in a fighting game. It's impossible to have a roster of 30 characters that all play differently and are all equally good in every situation, especially when playing on a professional and competitive level. I want to talk about the weapon meta of Doom Eternal and the usefulness of the less commonly seen mods. I don't think there's a bad mod in this game. I don't share the opinion that if something doesn't get used by pro-level speedrunners or Ultra Nightmare Horde mode players, that it's therefore trash. Because I believe that one of the biggest strengths of this game is how liberating it is to express yourself inside the systems it establishes. Not every mod is great for every playstyle, but that's what makes it interesting. On the highest, most pro level, the idea is to beat the game as fast and efficiently as possible. You start approaching the game from a very analytical position. You start memorizing enemy spawns, focusing exclusively on the trigger enemies of each encounter, skipping over fights that are optional, finding yourself in less moments of chaos and improvisation. And when you play that way, of course there will be weapons and tactics that stand out over others. In the early months of the game, the only thing a lot of people were talking about was lock-on rockets and super shotgun ballista. And in those days, I was being pretty insistent about the uses of rocket remote detonation. I can't tell you how many comments I got that said, LOL, just use lock-on, this mod is garbage. And then we've come to see a lot of remote detonation use, not just on a casual or high skill level because of its versatility, but pro level as well, because in a combo, it can be useful to falter an enemy when facing a dangerous advancing threat. Super Shotgun Ballista remains strong, but talk to any pro player and they'll tell you that Rocket Precision Bolt is the highest damaging combo in the game, and Super Shotgun Precision Bolt up close is actually stronger than Shotgun Ballista, it just takes more coordination. So which is better? Is it the option that's easier to depend upon, or the option that's more rewarding but easier to screw up? Again, it reminds me of fighting games, where the talented players and the less talented players, in the first few months, gravitate towards the characters that are the simplest to control, with the cheapest mix-ups, and the highest easy combo damage. And then six months to a year down the line, people come along with tech for underrated characters. The meta of the game changes, which benefits some of those characters, and you end up with a tier list that looks pretty different. So the Doom Eternal meta changes. Patches change things, difficulty changes depending on if you're playing the base game, DLC, master levels, horde mode, battle mode, brawler mode, and I've gotten a lot of requests for videos about the Destroyer Blade mod of the Ballista, or the Micro Missiles mod of the Heavy Cannon, and instead of stretching it out into a bunch of videos about each mod, I'd rather put it all together here into a larger discussion about mod utility and playstyle. We've had to fight against certain personalities and generally uninformed people criticizing Doom Eternal by saying it forces you to play one specific way. And while that's annoying, it's far more irritating to have people inside our own community insisting there's only one right way to play the game. Take the microwave beam, for example. Early in the game's life, it was dismissed by almost everyone as useless, including myself. We talked a little about how it can freeze a dangerous demon in place, and the explosion can falter surrounding enemies, but over time we started looking at how it also shows a readout of the enemy's health, and that a small shot causes a long stun, meaning you can continuously stun lock a demon while switching to heavy weapons. It causes plasma shields to almost instantly explode, it melts through a Doom Hunter's shield, exploding a fodder enemy causes a falter on all surrounding enemies which is basically a free frag grenade, and now with the spirits, it locks a possessed demon in place. And sure, maybe the speedrunners won't be incorporating it, but there's a wide spectrum of Doom Eternal players out there. The various applications of the microwave beam can be very useful to players all the way from the ultra casual to someone like myself who isn't running the game at the highest possible level, but I definitely know how to handle myself. And these days I find the microwave beam to be far more useful than Heat Blast. A lot of things don't even come down to what your skill level is. For one last fighting game analogy, imagine there's a top tier character that's focused on command grabs, and then there's a mid to high tier character that's focused on fast pressure and mobility. Some may say that for the best success, you should use the grab character, but what if my personal style works better with a fast pressure character? Some players will have more success with a lower tier character than they ever could with a top tier character. Not out of a lack of talent or execution, but because a different style of play jives better with their personality and preferences. 
Look up any video of Mortal Kombat player Biohazard and watch him destroy people with low-tier Kano, or 16-bit during her rampage of Catwoman during the second year of Injustice 1. It's because the characters speak to them. When I look at a mod like the Micro Missiles, I think about that. What's good about the Micro Missiles? They're a great source of early game damage, they're great to generally spray towards an enemy and in a retreat from a bad situation, they're easy consistent damage against a moving enemy, especially in boss fights, they're pretty good against some of the possessed demons, especially if you activate primary charger for the damage bonus and combine it with a grenade and you can destroy a possessed demon pretty quickly. Look at that. Man, what a good damage, bro. But sure, of course, Precision Bolt is the better mod. But why? It's not because you can zoom in, or get a headshot, or upgrade it to have an exploding shot. It's because of the animation cancel during weapon swapping. Shooting the Precision Bolt and then swapping to another weapon is an easy two-hit combo, and if you work on the coordination, which can take a while, you can start getting continuous loops of weapon swap animation cancelling to significantly increase your damage per second. This quick swapping can be done with the Micro Missiles too for fast rocket swapping, which is very easy to do on console because all you have to do is hold down both the fire button and the weapon mod button and then press the weapon wheel to switch back and forth. It's just a little less damage and you're missing out on the weak points. But look, that's taking it to the extreme. And the extreme is fun! I love it when I get in the groove and end up in a perfect streak of fast weapon swaps in an intense fight. But Doom Eternal isn't really trying to drive all their players into that. The game wants to get you into stylish play while regularly changing weapons. That's how you learn to really enjoy the game and express yourself. It's not about learning the fastest weapon swap cancels. Most people don't even think about that stuff. The end goal of Doom Eternal is not to see armies of players doing perfect precision bolt cancels. It's seeing a new generation of players that are using a few sticky bombs and then throwing a grenade into a blood punch, switching to super shotgun for a meat hook kill, killing a hell knight with a super shotgun ballista combo, eliminating the weak points on a mancubus with precision bolt ballista, lock on rockets on a baron and then ice bombing him into full auto for a nine shell recharge, heat blasting the whiplash and spraying her with micro missiles as you dash backwards and then turn around to chainsaw an imp and then glory kill a gargoyle for health. The doom dance, right? And when you're in the general Doom Dance, a mod like Micro Missiles is pretty good, especially when you have ammo capacity upgrades and you can hit the damage boost. It's also a good mod for players who aren't particularly good at the game and just need a powerful, fully automatic distance weapon with forgivable accuracy. It's also just good for players who aren't into all the quick swapping madness that other players love. If we're gonna celebrate the variety of playstyles in Doom Eternal, then we should also celebrate the strengths of different weapon mods in those playstyles. The Destroyer Blade mod of the Ballista was another mod that was crapped on for months. Oh, it slows you down and you have to charge it up, so it's not really worth it. Well, here we are in the next year, seeing that a single point charge will kill carcasses and prowlers, using a fully charged blast on a spawning enemy will do massive damage before he's even ready to start moving, making this mod very strong when you know where and when enemies are going to spawn. If you're moving around the arena and noticing the enemies are sort of funneling towards the center, you can toss an ice bomb and unleash hell. Understanding the arena and your movement can negate the slowdown effect of the destroyer blade charge. Using a jump pad or a meat hook or just jumping normally and then charging in mid-air means the charge won't slow you down and you can do massive damage while moving fast. This is a great use of the monkey bars after a meat hook to get some air time and land ready to fire. You don't have to do any of this. Not using it isn't what makes you a good player or a bad player. What makes you a good player is understanding your playstyle and using the tools that help that playstyle and finding success with it. I've gotten several friends into this game. Some of them built PCs specifically for Doom Eternal. And unfortunately, I've seen some of them fall into the trap of watching how certain people play the game and thinking they need to emulate everything they see. They soon found themselves enjoying the game less. And when they started loosening up a bit, experimenting with other mods and styles, they were able to express themselves more, and the resulting comfort and fun translated to more success in the game. 
So don't let anyone tell you how to play, okay? Casual player, frequent player, high level player, pro level player, speedrunner, everyone has a place around here, and there's something for everyone. Don't be afraid to change it up and try something other people say is good, but also don't feel bad about having a playstyle that's different from others. Thank you for watching, follow this channel for more Doom stuff as well as various other games and topics. See you next time.